Listen, everybody, to the words I have to say. Better get ready, because the Lord is coming one day. Thank you for tuning in to the Prophet Daniel's Report. This is Daniel White IV, the eldest son of Daniel White III. The intro music that you just heard is my late grandfather, Daniel White Jr., singing a song titled Get Ready. Today, my father, Daniel White III, is going to share with you news and information relating to biblical prophecy so that you can be prepared for the second coming of Jesus Christ. Daniel White III is the national best-selling author of over 20 books, including Just Jesus and The Prayer Motivator. He has spoken in meetings across the United States and in 23 foreign countries, and is the president of Gospelite Society and Torch Ministries International. Now, here's your host, Daniel White III. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Prophet Daniel's Report. This is report number 501. My name is Daniel White III, here to remind you that the Lord Jesus Christ is coming back one day and that you need to be prepared. This broadcast, this podcast, is not about predictions, nor is it about setting dates, as some foolishly have done in the past. However, it is all about preparation. Welcome to podcast number 501. First today, let's look at some signs of his coming in the news. The disciples asked Jesus Christ in Matthew 24, 3, What shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Jesus Christ then went on to give them and us clear signs that show us when we can begin to expect to see the coming of the Lord, and the end of the world as we know it. Those signs include the appearance of false Christs and false prophets in the world, wars and rumors of wars, famines, pestilences, fatal epidemic diseases, earthquakes in divers or various places, increased persecution of believers, the gospel being preached in all the world, signs and great wonders in the heavens involving the sun, moon, stars, and planetary movements, distress and perplexity among people, increased violence as in the days of Noah, increased sexual immorality and homosexuality as it was in the days of Lot. These things are happening as I speak all around the world. And there are many more the signs that I can share with you from the Word of God. Uh, however, today, looking at world events through the lens of the Word of God, the Bible, Let's look at some headlines from today's news that point to the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. First, today, under the sign category of distress among nations, according to ABC News, the U.S. Department of Homeland Security has revealed that a destructive Trojan horse malware program has penetrated the software that runs much of the nation's critical infrastructure and is poised to cause an economic catastrophe. National security sources told ABC News there is evidence that the malware was inserted by hackers believed to be sponsored by the Russian government and is a very serious threat. The hacked software is used to control complex industrial operations like oil and gas pipelines, power transmission grids, water distribution and filtration systems, wind turbine, 
buildings and even some nuclear plants. Shutting down or damaging any of these vital public utilities could severely impact hundreds of thousands of Americans. DHS sources said they think this is no random attack and they fear that the Russians have torn a page from the old Cold War playbook and have placed the malware in key U.S. systems as a threat and or as a deterrent to a U.S. cyber attack on Russian systems, guaranteeing a scenario of mutually assured destruction. Second, today, under the sign category of wars and rumors of wars, according to Reuters, the Turkish Prime Minister has accused Syrian forces of committing massacres in and around Aleppo and said Turkey would face a major new refugee crisis if Syria's second city fell into their hands. As U.S. warplanes bomb Islamic State forces in parts of Syria, President Bashar Assad's military has intensified his campaign against some rebel groups in the West and North that Washington sees as allies, including in and around Aleppo. Turkey has been pushing for the U.S.-led coalition to broaden its campaign to tackle Assad, arguing that there can be no peace in Syria if he remains in power. Third, today under the sign category of distress among nations, according to the Wall Street Journal, President Barack Obama secretly wrote to Iran's supreme leader in the middle of last month and described a shared interest in fighting Islamic State militants in Iraq and Syria, according to people briefed on the letter. He stressed that any cooperation on dealing with ISIS was tied to Iran striking a deal over its nuclear program. The U.S., Iran, and other negotiators are facing a November 24th deadline for such a deal. Fourth, today, under the signed category of distress among nations, according to the Associated Press, Norwegian intelligence authorities said on Wednesday that the country likely will be threatened by or hit with an act of terror in the next 12 months. The Joint Counter Terror Center says extremists from the Islamic State group among others, have called for terror acts against the countries that are part of the U.S.-led alliance against the group. Norway has said it will send 120 soldiers to join the international uh, campaign against Islamic militants in Iraq and help train local troops there. A fifth today under the sign category of increased natural disasters. According to the Iceland Review, the volume of magma which has surfaced in the volcanic eruption of Holeron is five to six times greater than what surfaced during an eruption in 2010 and four times greater than an eruption in 2011. In the two months that it has lasted, the volume of lava has reached one cubic uh, kilometers or 1,000 million cubic meters, which is more lava than what was produced during the 13 months that the 1947 Hecla eruption lasted. In terms of volume of lava, the Holeron eruption is the largest in over 230 years. Uh, beloved, the Bible says in John chapter 6, verses 39 and 40, And this is the Father's will which hath sent me, that of all which he hath given me, I should lose nothing but should raise it up again at the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son 
and believeth on him may have everlasting life. And I will raise him up at the last day. Beloved, you can read these stories in more detail and get more Second Coming related news on our website at secondcomingherald.com. Now it is time for Prophecy Boot Camp. Prophecy Boot Camp, of course, is where we deal with the basics of prophecy, the second coming of Christ, and what will happen in the future according to the Bible. Uh, the Bible, the Word of God. Our aim here is not to make predictions, but to help you get prepared by understanding how things will unfold in the end times. Our topic for today is titled, Where Are We Headed? Part 4, from Dr. Ed Heinzen's fine book, Revelation, Unlocking the Future. If you do not have a copy, get your copy today, anywhere fine books are sold. When we compare the contents of the Revelation with other biblical prophecies, ten basic patterns emerge. He goes on to say we will look at the first five right now. Number one, the church will continue to grow, but it will have varying degrees of success and difficulty. Jesus promised to continue to build his church and empower it to attack the gates of hell, but he also warned of persecution and rejection. Two, satanic opposition will intensify. Things will get worse as we get closer to the time of the end. Difficult times will come. Scoffers will mock the idea of Christ's second coming. False prophets will increase, and apostate religion will rival the true church. Number three, Israel will return to the promised land. The great end times regathering has already begun since 1948. Israel is once again a nation in her own land, but her return will touch off a storm of protest and conflict in the Middle East. Number four, the church will be raptured to heaven. When our Lord departed to heaven, he promised his disciples he would return to take them home with him. The Apostle Paul predicted that the dead in Christ shall rise first, and we that are alive and remain shall be caught up in to heaven. Fifth, judgments of the tribulation period will follow. The great judgments of the end times vividly described in the book of Revelation are called the hour of testing, the great day of their wrath, or the great tribulation. These judgments relate to the seals, trumpets, and bowls of the apocalypse. And ladies and gentlemen, if the Lord tarries is coming and we live, by the grace of God, we will continue looking at this topic on our next broadcast slash podcast. In closing, let's consider what God wants you and I to do in light of his second coming. Jesus Christ said in Luke 19.13 to occupy till I come. In light of that, we are, we are continuing our Bible study series on the books of 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, which Paul wrote to believers who had concerns about the second coming of Jesus the Christ and what they should do as they waited. This section is titled Comfort at the Grave, Part 12, from the book Waiting on the Second Coming by Ray C. Stedman. The comforting hope is that we shall all be together as the great family of God, with the Lord forever. Whatever the church does from that point on, it will be done with the Lord. As I have suggested, I believe he will actually remain on earth behind the scenes, directing the events described in the dramatic portrayal of the book of Revelation. The church will be with him, invisibly participating and directing the course of the great tribulation, but not going through it because we are no longer living on earth. 
We are transformed saints affecting the events on earth. The critical point Paul stresses is that we shall see Jesus face to face. That has always been a source of great comfort to believers through the centuries. One Christmas I received a beautiful painting of a mountain and lake in Glacier Park, Montana. I had stood by that lake and looked at that mountain, and the painting brought back to me the majesty and beauty of the scene. I remember thinking, I wish I could live here and look at this every morning. If the beauty of creation makes us shiver with anticipation, what will it be like to behold the Creator face to face? If we tingle at the shadow, what will it be to see the substance himself? If we revel in nature's masterpieces, what will it mean to be face to face with the artist himself? Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, if the Lord tarries is coming and we live, we will continue looking at this topic in our next broadcast slash podcast. Let's pray. Holy Father God, have the things, Lord, we heard today. Lead us to live a godly and holy and blessed and good life for your glory, praise, and honor, trying to win others from this sin-cursed world to yourself so that we all and the future could have everlasting life. In Jesus Christ, the name we pray and for his sake. Amen. Dear friend, remember the words of the Lord Jesus Christ in Matthew twenty four forty two. He said, Watch therefore, for you know not what hour your Lord doeth come. Matthew twenty four forty four says, Therefore be ye also ready for in such an hour. As ye think not, the Son of Man cometh. Dear friend, if you're not ready for the return of the Lord Jesus Christ, may I encourage you to get ready, get ready, get ready today by receiving him as your Savior. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Simply believe in your heart in the Lord Jesus Christ, that he died for your sins, was buried, and rose from the dead by the power of God on the third day for you and for me and for the world, so that we all can have everlasting life and be with him forever. So pray and ask him to come into your heart today to save your soul, and he will. Romans 10.13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So keep looking up, dear friend, for your redemption draweth nigh. Let us join in the prayer of John the Revelator when he prayed, Even so come, Lord Jesus. God bless you. Thanks for tuning in to the Prophet Daniel's Report. Remember, you can stay up to date with prophecy news and events on our website at secondcomingherald.com. If you would like to know more about accepting Jesus Christ as your Savior, what to do after salvation, or are looking for a good church home, please visit gospelitesociety.com for more information. This radio broadcast can be heard daily on Live 365, bcnradio7.com, gospelightworldradio.com, Buzzsprout, iTunes, Blog Talk Radio, and can be downloaded from numerous outlets online. God bless, and until next time, keep looking up for your redemption draw if not. Now, here's a song that will encourage you as you await Christ's return. You got to get your business straight.